In exercise 3, we are going to connect, download, and use our runtime image that we have already built in a previous exercise. So in order to do this, first we have to configure our target. The target menu allows us to do that. I'm going to go and select connectivity options. And as you see under connectivity options, I have different uh, particular sections in here. There's a default uh, target device. I can add my own device in here. Let's go ahead and call my uh, target device to be, for example, my Apex platform device. And then we click Add. As you see, the target device has chosen my newly uh, created device in here, my Apex platform device. Make sure that you have chosen download to be Ethernet, transport to be Ethernet, and debugger to be KD stop. You have different choices in here. Since we are going to use Ethernet boot, we need to choose Ethernet. Under settings, as you see, there is no active device at the moment. What we need to do, we need to basically turn on our e-box at this point. Please note that before uh, doing this section, we need to connect our e-box to the network and uh, we need to make sure that our IP address, uh, for example, if I come here and type in CMD, under CMD, if I type in ipconfig-all, it shows the IP address for this particular uh, uh, network connectivity. We have to make sure that the network connection in this scenario uh, is set to a particular IP address. So if I go and take a look at my IP address, as you see, the IP address for this particular workstation is 192.168.2.201. Your e-box uh, basically has a particular configuration that has to match this subnet. Part of this particular demonstration, we have set the e-box part of the auto-exec batch file, part of the configuration, to basically have 192.168.2. That a specific IP address number. That IP address has to be different from this number on your workstation. The only thing that I needed to uh, specify in here is that uh, your particular e-box should be part of the same subnet. And you should connect it either via crossover cable or uh, via a hub. As you realize here, the connectivity now is available. I've already turned on the e-box. Part of the e-box, there's a MS-DOS configuration that you can basically use in order to uh, go through uh, the setup and installation for uh, eBox. Uh, part of the default in installation option 3 automatically gets launched by eBox itself and you should see the eBox automatically identify itself as CEPC22544. Originally we didn't have that active device. You select that and that way you can communicate with your uh, eBox via Platform Builder. Click Apply, and as you see on the target device, core services settings are updated. You can click on Core saving Service Settings and make sure the target device is selected. We have enabled Kettle on the device boot. We clear the memory on the soft reset, and we enable access to the desktop files. We click Apply and Close. Now we are ready to go ahead and download our image to basically uh, eBox. From the target menu, all I need to do is select Attach Device. There's a dialog box appears, and as you see, it starts downloading the image into my eBox. As soon as the download is finished, I can go ahead and uh, see the Windows CE starts on the eBox itself. If you have connected the eBox into the monitor, uh, basically you can see uh, uh, the Windows CE gets launched. As you see, the debugger window appears here in the Platform Builder. In order to see that Windows C has already got it started, I can also show you uh, the screen on the eBox by going through Remote Zoom In. On the Remote Zoom In, as you see, on the default device, we can go ahead and make sure that we can connect to our eBox by selecting on the Connection, Configure Windows C Device Manager, select Properties, and all I need to do is select Test. As you realize, tries to establish a connection to my eBox. You got connected, you heard the noise. Click OK and OK. Automatically gets connected, as you see, uh, by clicking on this icon. 
and we can basically see the screen appeared on my uh, window here. If I change something on my configuration here on the Windows CE device itself and update my image, as you see on the Windows CE image, uh, I am typing a CMD and uh, it launches the command prompt. Now if I type in ipconfig on my uh, uh, basically Windows CE device and refresh this automatically you see the configuration appears for uh, my eBox. So in this demonstration as you saw uh, you could connect to the eBox, download your existing image and uh, you could test it by uh, basically uh, attaching to the target and running it. Uh, now you have a variety of different options in order to run programs on your eBox. The way we do it we could basically go ahead and for example launch Internet Explorer uh, from our eBox. As you see if you are connected to the Internet uh, basically it comes with the default settings of iCOB uh, tech uh, and uh, you have to make sure that you have selected a uh, particular IP address for your network card on the eBox itself. If I go ahead and refresh this, as you see, uh, I'm going to select networking and dial-up connection and part of this section I need to click on the network card and uh, part of this particular configuration I need to go ahead and change the setting for uh, for this particular device to not to receive its information from DHCP but to get it from a static IP address. So in order to do this all I need to do basically select a specify an IP address and put an IP address in here. has to be on the same range as your uh, uh, desktop. So I type in 192.168.2. for example 1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and click OK. So basically now as you see uh, the option is set and I can basically see that the IP address of my newly uh, generated image is now 2.1. So if I go to Internet Explorer again and try, try to type in the IP address of my development workstation, you should see a page indicating communication has happened between my uh, eBox and uh, basically my uh, uh, development station as you see is connecting to my uh, particular station over here. This is coming from Windows CE. If I type in I explore HTTP 192.168.2.201 from the command prompt window on, on my desktop itself the Internet Explorer gets launched and you can see basically uh, uh, the IE gets open and tries to connect to my IIS machine uh, using my existing page is basically bringing up uh, my uh, particular website. As you see this is the basically uh, website on my existing computer and from the remote location it shows a default page to be under construction. So this way I can prove that I can communicate between eBox and uh, basically uh, my development station. On the command prompt uh, if I go ahead and uh, basically type in uh, ping that IP address 192.168.2.201 which is the uh, basically IP address of my development station as you see it pings appropriately and it proves that I can communicate with my development station. There are other options part of this uh, particular demo. You could basically run any other program right from your um, platform manager. The run program basically indicates uh, what other programs are available for you to run. If you remember part of previous uh, exercise we created a hello from Apex application. If I run this I can basically refresh it and as you see uh, the application says hello world so your application works perfectly. Another option that you have is basically going through uh, target menu and type in uh, the C target control. The C target control basically 
is a menu that allows you to go and work with uh, uh, different options here, part of uh, Platform Manager. As you see by selecting the target and C target control, you're going to get the C target control right over here. And you can type in basically any command that you want to run. And that way, you can launch any program as you desire. So in this particular example, what I like to do, I like to type in S and CMD. That will launch a command prompt in my target designer. As you realize right now, Hello World is running. As soon as I type in CMD, S CMD, the CMD gets launch on my target design and as you see automatically got launched. Under Platform Builder as well, I can take a look at available processes. As you see right now at the moment, I am running Hello from Apex, I am running CMD and there are so many other processes are running. I have two separate versions of CMD as you see in here and if you pay attention to the bottom the screen, I have one command prompt here and one command prompt here. So as you see these are existing application running on my ebox at the moment. Now let's go ahead and see how do we reset our device. Uh, from the target menu, this target menu, remember that, is your basically representative of your ebox right in your platform manager. You can basically reset your device. By doing that, uh, this warning is going to tell you that you're going to reset your device. I say, okay, automatically goes and reset your device and re-download your Windows CE image. Remember that by doing that, you have to go and set the configuration of your network card back and give them a different IP address or the same IP address again in order to be available, uh, in order to be able to communicate with your Windows C via network cable. Uh, however, you don't have to be worried about communication between your platform manager and your Windows C device because you're using uh, basically uh, this particular option here. They call it Kettle or Kernel Independent Transport Layer which allows you to communicate with your device without being worried about any IP communication uh, between your development station and your Windows CE target device. You could also detach and attach to your existing uh, image uh, as, as long as you have the communication going on between your Windows CE and you know basically your uh, uh, platform builder. You can detach the device and that way you can just simply go ahead and turn off your e-box. So in this demonstration you saw how to go and uh, uh, build an image and how to download it to the ebox, how to configure the ebox by going through the connectivity options and how to set your uh, active device to be your ebox.